Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician, and on this video we're going to take a look at a right triangle and our trig functions, but now we're going to learn about what an inverse trig function is. Now, it's very similar to what we've been doing with these other previous videos on trig functions. We still have a right triangle, we still have a reference angle, we're looking at two sides, and we're deciding, is it a sine, is it a cosine, or is it a tangent problem? But what you might notice with this example right here is that that right triangle has a missing angle. You'll notice that that angle is labeled with theta. Theta is the variable we use when we talk about angles we don't know. And we actually already know two sides of this triangle. We have one side that's 87 units and the other side is 61 units. So for a problem like this, we actually want to solve for the missing angle we want to know what is that reference angle. Now we can still use our trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, but we're going to need to do one different step. So let's figure out on this video how we can use the inverse trig functions. So first things first is I'm going to start this problem out the same way I do when I'm working through a normal trig function problem. And that is I'm going to label that triangle with the sides that I have. So I'm going to start with my reference angle here of theta. I'm going to draw my arrow going across to the opposite side. And I now know that 61 here represents the opposite side. Next step is I'm going to trace my right angle in the right triangle. Remember the right angle points to the hypotenuse. And I now see that 87 here is representing the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So I have 87 as the hypotenuse, 61 as the opposite side. I think this is going to be a sine problem. This is gonna be a sine problem because that's the only ratio here that uses opposite and hypotenuse. So now I can go ahead and set up that sine ratio using the information that we have. And that information is we have sine of our reference angle. We don't know it, so I'm going to write theta equals the ratio of my two sides. Remember, opposite goes in the top. It's the numerator. So I'm going to write 61 as the numerator. The denominator on the bottom will be my hypotenuse, which is 87. And now you're probably thinking, what the heck? We are stuck right? Normally, we cross multiply and we're able to solve for x because we have x as one of this missing sides. But that's not the case anymore. We now have a missing angle, right? That missing angle here is theta. and We want to know what that is. Now, it would be really, really nice if we could get sine off of this angle, right? If sine was gone, then I would just be left with theta equals. And then I could actually figure out what theta is. But unfortunately, we're kind of stuck at the moment because sine is attached to that angle. We want the sine of that angle. Now, what most students like to think is they like to think, oh, okay, why don't we just divide both sides by sine? And that's something we can't do because we're not doing sine times the angle. There isn't like a little hidden multiplication there. That's not what's happening here. It, sine is a function that we're doing to that angle, and we're doing the sine function to that angle. And so to undo that sine ratio, right? I want sine to go away. What we then need to do is we need to do the inverse of sine, okay? The inverse of sine. Think about it this way. You're adding something, the inverse of adding is subtracting, right? You're multiplying something. The inverse of multiplication is division. Or you're squaring something. The inverse of squaring is a square root. We have a sine ratio. We want to do the inverse of sine. And to do the inverse, let me go ahead and label this real quick for you. When we want to do an inverse, you can do an inverse for all three of those trig functions. And it's just writing out the trig function name, sine, 
cosine and tangent. But since we're doing the inverse, how we denote that in our math classes is we write that with a negative one as the exponent. Now you're never going to say sine to the negative one power. You're not gonna say cosine to the negative one power, and you're never gonna say tangent to the negative one power. This reads as the inverse of sine, the inverse of cosine, and the inverse of tangent. And what this allows us to do is it now allows us, when I'm working through this problem, and I want theta by itself, I can now take the inverse of sine for both sides of the equation. Let me show you what I mean here. I'm gonna rewrite my equation here that I have. And that is, I have sine of theta equals, and remember it equals this fraction, 61 over 87. Now I wanna draw your attention to another parallel problem that we have here, right? Let's say I had the problem 3x equals nine, and I wanted to solve for x. We would do the inverse of multiplying by three. So the inverse of multiplying by three is dividing by three. We would do that to both sides. It would cancel on the left, and we would be left with x equals three, right? Same idea with our trig ratio here. I'm going to take the inverse of sine. Sine is what I'm doing to theta, that's the ratio. Let's now take the inverse of sine to both sides and be very important that you're doing it to both sides. So I'm gonna put a parentheses around that side and I'm gonna write the inverse of sine for that side. I'm also gonna write that for the left side. And since this is new to you, it might not make too much sense. But look here, I have the inverse sine of sine. Okay, the inverse sine of sine. When you take the inverse of the thing that you're taking the inverse of, right? Here I had three times x, then I did the inverse of three times, I did three divided by, those cancel. Same thing here. My signs here will get to cancel now because we've taken the inverse of sine. And by doing that, those go away, they cancel out, and then I'm just left with on the left side a single theta. I can now find what theta equals. And theta equals what's left on the right side of that equation. Theta equals the inverse sine of 61 over 87. That expression there, we can enter into our calculator and we'll now be able to figure out what theta equals. So let's now go to our free online calculator that we use, desmos.com scientific. It's a great free calculator that has all of these buttons that we need. Um, sometimes your iPhone or Android calculator can get a little bit complicated. So I always use this free um, website. It's a great way to do these calculations. I need to now type in the inverse sine of 61 over 87. Now we see the sign button here, and if I really wanted to, I could hit sign, I could hit the exponent button. Actually, you know what? It looks like that doesn't even work when I do it. So that's not how we're gonna get to sign on this calculator, or sorry, inverse sign. What we need to do is we need to hover over the spot here that says functions. We wanna click that so we can go to the function tab and you'll see right there, we have sine, cosine, and tangent. We have inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent. So I'm gonna type in inverse sine. Whoops, I typed it two times. I'm gonna go back to the main page here. I don't need two of those, I just need one. Let me go ahead and take that off. And we have inverse sine of 61 over 87. I put that in and we have now determined what our missing angle is. Our missing angle, what theta equals, is 44.519 degrees. Make sure you don't forget the degree sign. That is the missing angle. That's how we use inverse trig functions. The setup is very similar to the problems that we have been doing. You still have to label your triangle determine what sides you have. In this case, I had opposite, I had hypotenuse, 
And so I had a sine problem here. I set it up the exact same way, but since I don't know what my angle is, there's no cross multiplying, we take the inverse sine on both sides, and that is what we end up entering into our calculator, okay? Had this been a cosine problem or a tangent problem, then we just would have used inverse cosine or inverse tangent, okay? Same setups that we've been doing. It's just now the last step is a little tweaked because we're solving for an angle. All right, guys, it's that math magician, and I'll see you on the next video.